Hey YouTube, it's the test lead, and today we're talking about black box testing. If you've been in the QA world for a while, or if you're new to it, you've probably heard the term black box testing. But what does that actually mean? Part of making sure an application is ready to be used by an end user is testing it in various ways. An end user is the person that is going to use your application. For example, let's say the mobile apps on your phone the end user will be you because you're using the mobile apps. This video will talk about what is black box testing, the types of black box testing, and how to actually perform a black box test. Think of black box testing as driving a car. When you drive a car, you don't know all the little pieces and mechanisms inside the car, but you know when you press the gas that the car should go. It's the same concept for black box testing. You don't know the inner workings of the application, but you know when you put a certain input in, such as pressing the gas, you should get an output such as the car is going. How it does it? It's not your problem. You just want to do what it's supposed to do. And you may be wondering, why would we test something like this? Simple. Because it's not needed to know the inner workings when you're an end user or person using the application. Black box testing is done from the perspective of an end user. End users typically don't have access to the code. The main goal of black box testing is to make sure that the interaction with the user face works as expected. Its functionality should be tested as well as inputs and outputs against the original requirements established earlier in the software development lifecycle. Black box testing is usually the most unbiased and easiest to do because it does not require any software knowledge to test and is usually carried out by an independent team. So in short, as I mentioned previously, black box testing mainly focuses on the input and output of an application. And the input and output for black box testing is usually based on the requirements and specifications for testing. So let's say the requirements for your car is that when you press the gas, it goes. So your input is you pressing the gas and the output, your car is going. Simple. And now the types of black box testing. The main types include functional, non-functional, and regression testing. Regression testing is done after new code is introduced to an application to make sure that the new code did not have any unexpected effect on already existing code and functionality. Functional testing is done to test the business requirements of an application. Non-functional testing is done based on customers' expectations and performance requirements. Now let's talk about how black box testing is actually done. First, you want to identify the expected requirements and specifications of an application. Then you want to identify valid and invalid inputs to test. You want valid because that's the normal flow of the application, but you need invalid also because end users do unpredictable things. So you want to make sure if they do something that's not expected, the application handles it appropriately. For example, a login page. The expected behavior is you put in the correct credentials for a username and password and you can log in successfully. But what happens, they put in the invalid credentials, put the wrong password in, they just see an error message about the password being not correct. So that's why you need valid and invalid input. Next, once you have that, you should identify the output expected for each the invalid and invalid inputs. So going back to our previous example with the login page, with a valid input, the expected output is the user is logged in and a welcome screen is shown. With an invalid input, the expected output is a user is shown an error message showing the invalid password or invalid username. Next, you want to create test cases so we document everything. The test cases should include all the valid and invalid inputs that you're going to be testing for your testing process. Then you finally execute your test cases and to wrap it up, you'll document your results. Any problems or unexpected behaviors that happen in your testing process, you create a defect or bug for. And then you report this back to your team. They then identify their priority, and maybe we fix it right away, or we can put that in a backlog and fix it later on. If you found this video helpful at all, please like, share, and subscribe. If you need help on your QA journey, check out my book, QA Must Know Vocabulary. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos, Please leave them below, and most importantly, don't forget to learn something new today.